So Garmin has just announced a revamp of the Garmin Connect mobile app. It's really the first revamp we've seen of this app in many, many years, at least a major revamp. We've seen smaller things along the way, but there's a lot of people that complain that the Garmin Connect app is too cumbersome and complex to navigate and just kind of a, a general dumpster fire. So Garmin's taken that feedback to heart or something and is going ahead and starting to revamp the app. And with that, they've opened up a beta program that allows you to get into this new beta app as well as to give them feedback on it. So I'm basically gonna walk you through everything that's new and what's not changing as well, things I like and what I don't like after using it for a little bit of time. Uh, now, the actual invite process into the beta just like happens magically, it'll pop up automatically. It started on the 8th of January and over time they're gonna add more and more people. There isn't a way at this point to like request to be part of the beta. You just gotta pop up saying you're invited then you can go from there. Once you've got that, you're gonna see a new option in the settings uh, that says beta program right there. You would just simply access that in the app by tapping that more button there and then going to settings. And at the very, very top, once it pops in, you'll see beta program. And I can tap on that if I can tap correctly, there we go. And then tap join beta. At that point, you're in the beta. Now at that point, it's gonna walk you through a couple screens, a bit of a welcome, if you will, to this entire new format. Uh, so you just tap get started there. I've kind of saved some screenshots when I did this a little bit ago. Then you're gonna choose the goals that you want. So these are the things that you want the Garmin Connect app to focus on surfacing that type of information to you. After that, I just chose a couple of kind of random goals there. Uh, and then it's got a whole bunch of like survey questions uh, for what importance you want to assign to different. You can see some of these trends right there, like energy level, stress, steps, sleep, uh, exercise trends over time, training assessment, training plans, races, and challenges. Uh, from there, you tap finish and then you're basically ready to roll with the new setup. Note that this is a beta, so things are definitely like quirky here and there. They're overall pretty good, but there are some quirks in there. Uh, but the goal of this is to get your feedback on what's great and what sucks, and then hopefully change it for whenever they release it. And they haven't defined exactly when that release will be. Uh, so in any case, uh, this is my live homepage right now. Uh, and you can see at the very top there is the activity, my most recent activity. In this case, I just got off the uh, indoor bike over there doing a ride. So you see that right there at the top. And hey, just a quick note, if you are if you are finding this video interesting or useful, definitely whack the subscribe button. Uh, my YouTube stats here show that 87.7% .7 of you are not subscribed, which is a pretty high number that you can easily fix with one tappy tap. Anyways, back to the thing. Below that, there is the in focus section. This is these new panels that you can swipe uh, left and right. You can customize up to five different panels that show up as well as the order those panels are shown. And I'm gonna show you that customization in just a second. In this case, this is coming from all those survey questions that you answered. Uh, so I put my training readiness or my training readiness, my very first one there, the most useful one for me. Uh, I swipe again, I see my training status. It shows overreaching. That makes sense because I came off the holiday period where I was enjoying the holiday period. Uh, and now I've just like full bore back into training. And so therefore my uh, training load is a bit wonky with the most recent side of that will have last 10 days or so being much, much higher than the previous two to three weeks. So this actually makes sense. Swiping again to the right, I've got my running focus there. Uh, again, I got my all activities focused. Uh, and this, the time that you see there is a little bit high for me because I often dual record multiple devices for testing purposes. For things like training status and training load, Garmin smartly like gets rid of the duplicates, but for the total distances and times it does show from all my devices. So I haven't quite done 11 hours yet this week, but I'll probably end up maybe close to that. Uh, and then I swipe one more time, I can see my sleep focus from last night. Now, one of the interesting quirks with the in focus panel is that this is live training readiness data, which normally up until this point, Garmin's only shown you the training readiness data for the moment you woke up that morning in Garmin Connect app. On your watch, it's live the entire day because your training readiness score is impacted by my workout I just did, as well as then over the rest of the day, it'll start to climb up again because I'm doing nothing. So you see right now, after my workout, it's down to 13, which I think is fair. Uh, but before my workout at 8.37 this morning, uh, it was 26. Uh, and this is where I'd like to see this be live uh, as opposed to being this kind of continually behind the scenes thing. At the same time, my one request from both myself, but honestly more from my wife, is actually on this page right here, you'll see there is no way to see that training readiness status over longer periods of time. For example, seven days or 30 days or six months. One of the suggestions my wife had is great though. See this chart right here? This is Apple's steps like activity chart, if you will, over time. And it shows that on your calendar. Uh, we've seen Coros and I think even Fitbit for a while copy general concepts of that, AmazeFit I think as well. Uh, but I would love to see the same little training readiness 
this bubble, but in that format there over months of time. Or if they want to find some other way to trend it over months of time, that's fine too, but there is no trending of trending readiness. Anyways, that tangent aside, on to the next item. The next section is the in-between section right there. Uh, and this is something that you can't seem to customize. This just happens from those survey questions. So it puts the sleep coach there. Uh, that's something on Garmin's newer devices. Uh, is something that I should consider. Uh, unfortunately, this is actually the metric I find most useless of Garmin's different metrics. Uh, the sleep coach only recommends between seven and a half hours and nine hours. So it's not super useful in the grand scheme of things. I would love to see this customizable as well in a more direct way than going back and re-answering different questions. Uh, I could see, for example, sleep trends actually being more useful there or HRV status or whatever the case I want to be. So below that, we've got the at a glance section. These are cards that you can customize and I'll show that in just a second as well. Uh, and each one of these cards, you can see here, I've got these uh, top six there uh, and I can add more or see all of my cards by tapping see all. So at the top there, I've got my heart rates, my body battery, my sleep score, my HRV status, my training load, my training status, my load focus, VO2 max and so on. Uh, and now you can customize the order of these cards and then basically just dumps like a whole bunch more in there that you can add or remove if you want to. And then if you were to tap on any one of these given cards, for example, if we tap on, I don't know, heart rate there, you'll see the normal heart rate page you would see in the past when you tap on that particular metric. Then from there, you can go into seven day, four week, et cetera. Uh, so, Backing out here. Now at the bottom here, you've got these additional panels. You see training plans is listed right now, but if we tap on edit home, there's also events and challenges. Uh, and so the idea here being that I can go in and add a training plan or an event that I'm training towards or a challenge, and I'll see more information that uh, right there. So I'll go ahead and I'll tap find a plan just to show you how this looks. I'm gonna choose running. Uh, and unfortunately I can't choose a marathon plan, so I'll choose a half marathon plan there. I'm gonna set up the plan. I'm gonna accept through this. I'm just gonna blow through this really quick to show you what it looks like, how much I run each week. I set a time goal here. I guess I can't go any faster than that. So I'll just have to have to work with that. Um, and I'm gonna choose a coach. I know Jeff Galloway, there we go. And next long run day, I'm gonna choose that Thursday actually. Uh, Wednesday. Um, and we're in Amsterdam, to me, but the lighter one worked just fine. Create a plan, done. And now a few things have changed if I go back on the home page. The very first, if I swipe to the right there, you'll see it's got this benchmark run uh, that it wants me to do for today. So basically it's gonna go ahead and this is probably uh, basically just running hard and it's gonna figure out uh, basically a benchmark for that. Uh, but that's again in my total today's activity time for basically a scheduled workout for today. And if I go down to the very bottom now, you'll see my training plan there. And you can see basically this little kind of training section for what this week's coming up uh, from a overall activity standpoint. If I were to tap on that, it would open up the training plan section. And I can see more information about that particular plan. Now, as I mentioned, you can also customize all this stuff. So if I go down to the very bottom here, there's the edit home button uh, and you'll see the in focus. That's that top section that I can swipe left and right. I can turn that on and off and then I can change all the different things that I want in that. If I tap on escape, uh, you'll see the next section for the at a glance. If I look at edit at a glance, I can go down into all the different things that I want in that. I can remove some. I can also add more from the list down below as well. Uh, kind of all the stats that you would expect to see from a component standpoint are listed there. And then going down again, uh, you can see down the bottom I have what I showed you earlier, the events, training plans, and challenges. And then finally, there's the reset home option that just resets everything back to the beginning, allowing you to do the whole survey bit all over again. If you wanna leave the beta program, you can always do that at any point in time and go in and out. Uh, so for example, I just tap the more button down at the bottom. I go down to settings, and then up here at the top, I choose beta program, turn that off. Uh, no thanks for giving feedback as to why. And then here we go back to the main screen, just like you would have seen in the past. And thus here's that the screen looks like kind of the before, if you will, from before and after. Uh, you can see what it looked like before the updates to this uh, with all these kind of panels. So there's a lot more swiping left and right now versus swiping down. Uh, and generally speaking, the information uh, is better consolidated on the new one for the home screen. There are some little gaps, uh, for example, on the training status page, if you look at those two side by side, you don't see the actual training load number anymore, which is kind of super important, like the acute load number is missing. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, but overall, I think they did a good job on the home screen. Now, a couple notes. One, this is actually not just the Garmin Connect mobile app. It's also the Garmin Connect desktop desktop website as well. So if you use the Garmin Connect website, that's all gonna mirror the same thing from that homepage standpoint. In fact, when you make the changes here on the phone, it also mirrors those changes onto the Garmin Connect website once you hit the refresh button. So that's kind of cool. The other thing though is conversely, there is no change to the rest of the Garmin Connect mobile app. So this is really just focused on that homepage itself as opposed to everything else. And when I asked Garmin about that, they said they're just focused on the homepage for now. Maybe things will change later on, but who knows? And you know what? 
I don't think that's a bad idea. Most of the complaints around the Garmin Connect mobile app are for those that have a kind of challenge like getting past that first page with just like stuff flying everywhere and data and stuff like that. Those of us that like a lot more data probably do actually appreciate the rest of the Garmin Connect app in terms of all the depth of data. Uh, outside of the Apple Health app for the backend database for all like all the metrics you have, mostly a lot of medical metrics and things like that. There is really no other platform out there that has as much data accessibility in it um, in terms of finding that data as the Garmin Connect mobile app. The problem, as I've said for many years, is you have to know how to navigate that. This seems to do a good job of like splitting the difference right now of saying, hey, if you want that homepage, it's nice and clean and easy to see. But if you want all that data, it's still accessible under the More tab. And you can go down into activities or health stats or performance stats or trending and planning. And all that stuff is still there to go and you know trend over longer periods of time and dig into and, and all that goodness. So for now, I think this is actually probably a good, good fit or good blend between the two. Anyways, hopefully you found this interesting or useful. I've got plenty more news coming out uh, over the next few days here. Garmin has released a ton of stuff this week, not just hardware and not just the software platform stuff, but also a lot of updates for devices. And some of those I'm doing some testing on, I wanna kind of dive into with more detail than just throwing it out there in a quick video. So stay tuned for that over the next couple of days and hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. With that, have a good one.